I'm waking up in the wonderful Colorado mountains today, and I've got a task at hand. Some buddies are on their way from Denver to meet me, and by the time they get here, I need to have a campsite worth the drive. I'm venturing straight into the Colorado flat tops to find a place that we can call home for the night. are massive. I drove two hours from the highway last night, and I'm guessing I have another two to three to get to my planned campsite. I could easily plan several five-day trips in this area. It just scratched the surface of what it has to offer. So if you ever plan a trip to Colorado in September, do not count on seeing the legendary blooms of wildflowers on the, in the high country because by September it's over. I would say past the second week of September in Colorado, snow is possible just about any time. A mud pit. Um, so, ah, oh, Blue, you broke my cable again. Blue is the absolute queen of breaking my USB charging cables. You did it again, dog. Probably my fault for having them plugged into a poor place. You have a dog. Um, this kind of stuff happens. Bummer. Down another one. Time to buy some more. The next truck, I'm going to plan on some different tactics for how everything's going to work. It's going to be dog proof and it's going to be Tyler proof. Tyler resistant. There's no such thing as Tyler proof. I'm not sponsored by Trails Off-Road, uh, but I do think that they're a cool group of people. I've talked to them several times at different expos over the last couple years. On this entire trip for all the trail routing, I am just gonna use Trails Off-Road. So I'm not using Gaia for this, um, or I'm not using Onyx or anything like that, because I do have all of the apps because I like to compare stuff and, and test stuff out. So on this trip, I'm just using Trails Off-Road. The group meeting me shouldn't have any trouble with following this trail, as it's been mostly easy the whole way in. But I've been attempting to contact them with my DeLorme inReach and it's not working. Either they haven't checked their phones or my messages are not sending. They know where we're supposed to meet, but the flat tops are vast and there are a lot of wrong turns that you can make up here. With all the map data that I supplied them before the trip, I can only hope that they're on the right path. I'm not sure which map apps the other guys are using, but Trails Off-Road has detailed map guides. And so I know that I'm approaching the most challenging part of this route. So we're getting up to a pretty steep incline. It looks like a couple of switchbacks, or at least from here, it looks like it's pretty steep. Well, this is a pretty tippy spot here, I think. Yeah. I can just ride the side here. Be okay, I hope.
Tak. Sliding. I'm sliding right now. I think I need a winch. There are definitely drawbacks to traveling alone, and there are definitely drawbacks to having a top-heavy, short wheelbase vehicle, and this is one of them. I avoided the line to my right because of how off-camber it appeared to be, and now I'm in possibly an even worse situation. So I took a line too far to the left to avoid being tippy, and my back tire is sliding a little bit off. I'm gonna let blue out. Whoa. I'm taking precautions because where I'm sliding into is much worse than the camera would have you believe. Steep and far enough down to roll at least once. Slippy tippy, don't like it. Careful. As you guys have probably noticed in my videos, the FJ is extremely tippy. No big deal. I am glad I put the Max Track under there though, because that was starting to cave on me. Which is never good. Blue, watch out, pup. I'm letting you back in. Just get out of the way. Being top heavy sucks. I didn't have enough winch line to make it up to this tree or else I probably would have just done that since I'm testing a winch out this weekend. But anyway, we're through. Put the max tracks under the rear tire and that was incredibly helpful. So I am very familiar with my own vehicle and I'm very familiar with it being very top heavy. So I, uh, I usually get pretty intimidated by the off camber stuff just because I have more to worry about. Ooh, this is a rock climb. I don't know if Greg's gonna be able to make it up this. I can. I don't know if Andrew can. Dang it. I'm so close to the lake. I don't think they can make this. This section of the trail is steep and loose. I'm trying to climb it without my lockers and without a track turned on. Neither of the other vehicles coming have these features, so I'm testing to see if they can even make it up here. Andrew's Tundra does have a winch, but that doesn't help much when there's nothing to anchor to. With my lockers turned on, I can climb up no problem. I am uh, communicating with Greg through the uh, Delorme inReach right now, texting back and forth. We're supposed to go out in Glenwood, but he is in Glenwood at Transfer Trail. So since they didn't get off in Dot Zero, they're probably four, they're about four hours from me either way they go. So basically they went to the end of the trail instead of the beginning of the trail, or there's not really a beginning or an end, but they went the opposite way. With a total loss of communication, I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I may have to turn around at some point and go find my friends, but the lake is so close that I just have to head up and go see it. And right away, I know I made the right choice. This place is absolutely breathtaking. So this is it. They're fish jumping already. You can see that the yellow is starting to set in. 
early fall. Like I said, it's getting cold up here at night. So I'm four or five hours from them and they're four or five hours from me, but they're not responding. So I assume that they went up transfer trail. So because I haven't heard from them and I don't know where they're at, and I'm already up here, this is one of the most beautiful camping spots I've seen in Colorado. And there's nobody up here, at least right now. I'm sure there will be here before too long. But uh, this is a good place to fish and hang out. I could get on the move and meet up with them today. But the problem with that is there's a big loop that we're doing or more of a horseshoe. And to do all of that will deplete my fuel. Basically where we're at is I have no idea where those guys are right now. I haven't gotten any updates from them and I've got my fishing pole. So, sounds like I'm hanging out here. I really don't know what to do unless I get a text from them. I'm staying and it's an awkward situation. Not that they can't, you know, they're fully prepared. They'll be fine, they're just gonna camp somewhere else. This is kind of like my trip to Utah last October, just chasing friends down the whole time. And I barely got to spend time with those guys, but it was still a fun trip in its own way. Sometimes things don't go according to plan. I was just taking a quick walk to see if there are any mushrooms around. This doesn't look like very good mushroom territory, but still worth the walk because it sure is pretty. I don't know if that's an eagle or if that is a osprey. Or that is a giant bird. I think that's a bald eagle. It's got a big white tail. I would imagine this is a perfect spot for an eagle to hang out because they can fish. Where's he going? So, I mean, look at this. What would you guys do? Probably not go venture out with just high hopes that you'll run into them in the next four hours, burn a bunch of fuel. They'll still have fun without me. Mike picked that up. I think that was that eagle. Oh yeah. Yep, bald eagles. Three of them up there. Oh, there's one. I was so close to not bringing my long lens on this trip. This one right here. And uh, now I am at a lake with three eagles swooping around waiting for dinner. So there's potential for some pretty cool stuff here. This looks like a huge lens and it'll get pretty close, but this isn't National Geographic stuff. Those are like $12,000 lenses. I'm gonna try to get him catching a fish. I know that's what he's doing. While I'm sitting here watching this eagle, I hear another vehicle up here. Check this out, these guys found me. To say that I'm baffled that these guys found us is a massive understatement. They actually came from Blair Mountain. They ended up going past Glenwood, and so they actually took an easier way here. So that rules that option out for me though. So we'll do transfer trail tomorrow. I did not see that coming. I can't tell you how good it was seeing these guys pull into camp. The sections of the trail that had me concerned were totally bypassed because of the direction they came from. 
It really couldn't have worked out better. And now we can enjoy the evening by the water, build a fire, and enjoy the mountain air as we planned. I think we can all take a second to appreciate Andrew's home-built kitchen setup. This one boils fast, but it also melts Ooh. the grate a little. He took my heat exchanging hot water system to the next level. Everyone had a long day on the trail, and it's nice to sit down with these guys, have a few drinks, discuss what the rest of this trip might bring, and head to our tents. Day one has definitely been awesome. Today is starting off in typical fashion, aside from the fact that I'm drinking hot coffee for a change since it's a chilly morning. I reposition the FJ for optimal sun, so my Snowmaster fridge can keep cranking out ice cubes all day long, because within a few hours, it'll feel like summer again. swim today assuming it warms up like it did yesterday and uh, just hang out at camp we decided we're just gonna hang out here for the day because it is one of the coolest campsites we've found before so I'm gonna get started on trying to catch some fish and uh, I'm gonna cook one for blue for sure I don't know if I'm gonna make any for myself I don't really bring anything to eat with fish but let's see what we can do Thank you. 
one and blue does not want to leave it alone made a little live well here pretty good sized fish I already dropped off that shelf a couple times walking around out there. Oh, it's so good. I'll <laughs> <laughs> go away. Oh, it's so nice. Red peppers would have been good with it, but get too lazy. My fish tacos certainly weren't the greatest I've ever had, but fresh food is fresh food. And it looks like I'm not the only one looking to catch a fish today. Me and Andrew are spying a bald eagle right now. He is, I guess I'll have a video of him. Once this comes out. In the 1950s, there were less than 1,000 bald eagles left on this planet, but because of conservation efforts since then, the population has grown to over 300,000. We had a pretty successful day today. We caught some fish, ate the fish, hung out at camp all day. We're gonna get back on the trails tomorrow morning. I think we're all worried that we won't find as cool of a campsite after this, which is a very real possibility. When you find one cool campsite, stopping there prevents you from finding other cool campsites. So I personally think it's always fun to go out and find more because you can't stay at one every time and You'll always find better campsites. So anyway, we're going to venture out and try to find something else. Morning has come, and though it's bittersweet to leave this place, we have more to explore here. After a cold shock to the system, we will be ready to hit the trail. So now we're gonna go do transfer trail and uh, should be pretty good stuff. Greg doesn't have a locker, doesn't have a track and he's in a manual. And so his truck is gonna be a little bit slow going down some of this, but I think he's gonna do just fine. get here. This is the most direct route to meet up with Transfer Trail.
Both of these trucks are very capable, but friends look out for friends who don't have rock rails. Good. Passenger. Keep going straight. Keep it straight, keep it straight. All right, now driver. You're good. All right, walk this down. Go. Straighten up, straighten up, just walk it down. And now we're going back over the off-camber spot, which it might not be as bad going up, and I won't be as close to that ledge for sure. Yeah, yesterday I thought the better line was closer to the edge and it just started caving out under me. I like that airbag. Oh yeah, that's nice. Let's load it up the other side. You just kept her straight. You know, you kept it up, keeps it just a little bit tipped the way you want. That's awesome. That a boy. I'm gonna just show Jesse that. Greg didn't even roast his clutch. We got through all that relatively painlessly, and now it's dirt roads, and we're gonna get on to transfer trail. As amazing as this place is, it has a heavy past. The history of the land is like an Avatar movie. The flat tops of Colorado is indigenous land. The Ute tribe started developing their language and culture here more than 10,000 years ago, and they inhabited this land until the late 1800s. It started with the settlers enforcing tolls on these very travel routes that the Ute had used for generations. Eventually though, the tribes were forcibly moved to the near useless lands in the deserts. I'm a hypocrite for admiring the native people, but traveling their stolen land by a petrol burning machine from the industrialized world. My nature is to explore the world and learn. Both can bring a wide range of emotions that can sometimes create more questions than answers, but what's important is to learn not only from our own past, but the generations before our own. We should strive to be better than those that came before us. Love this land as the Ute tribes once did, and be mindful and respectful if you travel here, because you are on ancestral land.
This part of Colorado is vast. You can literally drive for days up here. A lot of this land has trail access, but a lot of it is wilderness area, meaning that there's no motorized anything allowed. In 1919, a man named Arthur Carhart came here to map the area for over 100 homes, but instead to return and convince his superiors and the National Forest Service that the project should be abandoned to protect the land. Arthur saw the beauty of this place, and because of it, it later inspired the Wilderness Act of 1964. This is a super cool beginner route for somebody who wants to like test their vehicle out and not have to worry about anything too crazy. There are a ton of lakes up here, but a lot of them are dried up currently because we are at the end of the season. These rock formations, it's almost man-made. We're covering good ground. We're gonna be stopping here probably in the next hour, I would say, to find a campsite. The best spots are probably taken by the hunters right now. And then of course it is a holiday weekend. So there are probably other people out here. We are driving across a lot of solid flat stone. So there are a ton of super flat campsites, which is pretty cool. this looks almost like it's paved or something but it is definitely natural and the flattest camping I mean you could just pull onto that pop the tent not worry about putting any rocks under you at all pretty rare pretty rare in Colorado to find a flat giant flat area we've covered a lot of ground today it's about that time that we had a setback after all of the mud pits that I've seen this weekend I ended up being a little too brave well, we don't know how deep it gets, so Andrew's gonna winch me out backwards instead of forward, just to be safe. Okay, I know better, but driving fatigue got the best of me. The FJ won't budge, and though I am testing out a winch this weekend, the water's already coming in the door, so it's probably best just to get pulled out backwards. And after just a tiny tug, I've got traction again, and I can back out of my hole of shame. Right out before it wouldn't go anywhere. You did most of that under your own power. Yep. The only time I've ever wedged is in the snow. I love that we had to use it. That was awesome. Just a little bit of water. Just a little bit, not too bad. I hope my ham radio isn't destroyed. Oh, uh, how much? How much water got in? It was probably like, it was because I was in such an angle, it was probably like to hear, but my radio is up a bit. So I don't think it got in that far. Mm -hmm. That's a, I like that better. <laughs> It came with Does two it, of them. It, oh, that's great. I don't know why it came with two, but it's because you lose one. But the, this thing is like the old one, and it's all it has the same amount of electronics in it. Right. It's huge. You can't put it in your pocket. I kind of wondered if that mud pit wasn't going to be deeper, but I didn't expect it to be that deep because I was like, oh, well, if I get stuck, I'll try out the new winch. But because of how deep it was, I was a little apprehensive about pulling myself farther because I don't know what that was going to turn into. So. I didn't get to try the new winch. Andrew pulled me backwards. I guess I drove out of it for the most part. When I first tried, 
it wasn't doing it. Maybe I sunk in a little bit more or something like that while we were messing around. But so anyway, I got out pretty easy. Blue didn't even know if something was going on. She just went to sleep. I got a bunch of water in the cab, which I was tilted, so it shouldn't be too bad, but it's near my ham radio. I have no idea if I just smoked my ham radio. And if I did whatever, it's not like it ever gets used anyway. But I honestly think that's the first time I've ever gotten water intruding into the cab. Usually I move through water pretty quick. I've never gotten stuck in it. So we're getting pretty close to far enough to where we can set camp somewhere, but we're trying to cover ground so we don't have to do it tomorrow because everybody's got to get back home and work the next day, of course. After a very long day on the trail, we have finally found our campsite. So my water is basically empty. We've only got one night to go. So I'm filling up from this creek, but I'm unsure if my filter got frozen or not last winter. So I'm gonna boil it and put it in there. We only need one, one gallon. So the filter will take out all the crap, but as far as Giardia goes, I'm gonna boil the water from this little creek here. Doesn't look like the best water in the world. This trip was intended as a farewell to summer, and every day has been slightly cooler at night, but tonight is already well on its way towards freezing. After shivering around the fire for a while, we're all pretty eager to climb into our sleeping bags. With temperatures like these, I can already feel winter creeping in. This morning was crazy. I'll explain everything in a minute. Bottomed out. Right here. But it's a tree, I mean the tree stops right here. Damn, that's a big dent too. Yeah. So I, yeah, I came down, hit this, and then I backed out a little bit, slid into it, backed out more, hit that thing. We saw this Tacoma right. drive past our camp last night, but he didn't see us. He was leaving his hunting area, took a wrong turn, and ended up here. Right. And I have to say, I'm impressed to see a stock vehicle this far up this road. I was intending on testing a winch from open road four-wheel drive this weekend, and the opportunity literally came knocking. Bailey, the owner of this Tacoma, got little sleep last night and is riddled with anxiety, but we're gonna get him on his way back home. 
A winch needs all of the line out to be at its maximum rated pulling capacity. Shocking. I thing. guess at this distance that I have about 5,000 pounds of force, which should be plenty enough to get this Tacoma off of this log. Jeez. With the front end free, now the goal is to pull him back through the mud, avoiding the log, of course, and back onto dry dirt. We're doing okay, everything cool. we can yep. to avoid putting any more dents into this nearly brand new truck. Yeah, like I said, if you want to pull in down there, I'll follow you down. And if you want to pull in at our camp, I'll uh, I'll set you up on maps, and then also we'll make sure your message goes out on that satellite thing. Because since we're in the trees, I doubt it went out. I'll get your phone number from you and send you some money. Right? No, no, not needed at all. I literally woke up this morning and I heard people talking. I thought it was just Andrew and James. And uh, there's a hunter at our camp. I should have got a video of that, but it was literally, I woke up 30 seconds before this. And we'd seen him come up last night in a white Tacoma and uh, he made his way up. Well, he got stuck in the mud. And so he hiked probably a mile, mile and a half down to find somebody to help him. And so he had to sleep basically in the back of his truck. And uh, he's supposed to be home last night with no way to contact his wife. So we punched a, uh, we punched a message into the DeLorme in reach to send that out, but he was a little embarrassed of where he was stuck, but he was stuck in a very legit spot. He had a log under his control arm, and then he was in some mud that doesn't matter what kind of mods you have, uh, a winch or recovery boards is pretty much what was required for that. I mean, it sucks for him that he got stuck all night, but for me, it worked out pretty good. It was just first thing in the morning, it was just kind of like, wait, what's going on? So I just kind of throw all my stuff aside got blue situated and then headed up to help him out. So it's quite a way to wake up in the morning. And now he's gonna stop by our camp so I can give him directions on how to get out of here. We're gonna make sure his message goes through to his wife and then he can be on his way back home. The winch was very successful. Testing the winch was awesome. I, I advised him to at least get some cheap recovery boards just for this type of situation. And uh, hopefully after this he does because those will help him tremendously. Wow, watching this thing's suspension is pretty impressive. I think we could have gotten him out of that pretty quick with some recovery boards, but honestly, uh, I needed to use the winch, so that's the way I went. We got Bailey on his way home, and now that we're all packed up, we're ready to do the same. So we're headed out of our campsite and we are heading back to civilization. Trips sure go by pretty fast, but uh, we gotta get down this and see if we run into our buddy in the Tacoma. Hopefully he made it out all right. This is a pretty gnarly trail. The drive out is always a bit of a bummer but this one hits even harder than normal because summer is over. With every summer that passes, I wonder to myself if I truly made the most of it. I'm fortunate enough to see nature from a perspective that most of the population never will, and still, it doesn't feel like it's enough. Time is fleeting, and with every passing year, I feel like there will never be enough time to see all of the places I want to see, but I'm certainly going to try. I've never done transfer trail in its entirety. It was actually one of the first trails, actually I think the first trail that I started to do in Colorado when I first moved here, but I was by myself and I was a little nervous about it, so I didn't continue the trail. So there's a lot of it that I've not done yet. So we're gonna see uh, how it goes.
Look how crazy this is out my window. And just like that, the flat tops come to an end. And it's no longer gonna be flat for the rest of the way down. Right down there, civilization. And bills are popping up in my text messages. It's unusually smoky. We've made it to the end of the trail and into Glenwood Springs. The boys are headed back to the Mile High City while I've got an excruciating 15 minute drive home ahead of me. The flat top certainly didn't disappoint and I can't wait to go back. Thank you for joining along on this adventure and thank you so much for watching and until next time.